<laughs> What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to Ride the Bean. Hello. Today we are still in Norway. Uh, we're out enjoying a beautiful, uh, beautiful day. Oh, it's a lot of smoke. <laughs> and uh, making some uh, some coffee over the fire, the good old good old fashioned cowboy coffee. And um, now we've actually been in Norway for almost two months. Yeah, that went fast. Yeah, it was supposed to be three weeks at least for me. Uh, but uh, the workshop that has my bike in Italy, mm. uh, it took a, a quite a while longer yeah. to fix my bike than. Uh, than I expected. It took two months. <laughs> <laughs> two months. <laughs> yeah. But now finally I got news that the bike is um, being fixed. So next week I'm headed back to Italy to continue the trip. Um, I'll get back to more details of what I'm going to do then uh, in, a, in a later episode. But uh, now, yeah, now we've been here for about two months. Uh, and what has been your impression of the country so far? What have you been up to since we came here? <laughs> so, yeah, so since I arrived here, I've been busy with um, trying to make a life here. Uh, I, I wanted to live here for a year or so uh, because I, I left my flat and uh, my job and I just wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to talk with smoke in your face. It, it's difficult to stay alive. <laughs> It's typical. Why do we have to blow exactly where we sit? It has all this way to blow and it blows here. That's typical. When you make a bonfire, it all, always blows in your face. Yeah, it does. It's like it knows where you are and it's coming there. Okay. What was my plan when I came here? Where I had no plan. I was supposed to move in England uh, and then two weeks before that was cancelled and so I just followed Kenneth here and I thought, well, uh, this country looks beautiful, so... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm about to cry because I'm sad. <laughs> Is it that horrible to be here? <laughs> I really love it. The, <laughs> the tears of happiness. It's, um, yeah, so... <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. So now we've been here for about two months yeah. ish. Um, what have been your impression of Norway so far? What, what have you been doing so, since you came here? Uh, since I came here, it went really fast because I decided to move here for a year or so. So I have to do all the immigration papers and look for a job, look for a house. So these things take time in a new country. Um, but actually, I didn't find it so hard. Uh, I found a job after a week and a flat after three days, but the paperwork to get a uh, residency permit and all of that, that took a long time. So I've been busy doing this and exploring, of course, like going to your cabin. Um. Yeah, so we've been actually, we've spent quite a lot of time at the cabin. Yeah. All right, and then uh, uh, we took uh, yeah. some drives around. A few weeks there. There was yeah. some uh, some work to be done there. Yeah. <laughs> Since a while, that's why you came back, so... Yeah, the reason I came back in the first place was to empty the toilets. Mm. And then, of course, there's always other things to, to fix at a cabin. So we did this. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we've been uh, picking some mushrooms. Wasn't I didn't find too many. No, and you don't like mushrooms, so I could have them all. Yeah. And they were really tasty. <laughs> and we picked some berries as well. It's amazing how much berries Norway has. <laughs> The whole yeah. floor is covered in it, so... Look at you! So many! She's talking to the blueberries and the mushrooms. <laughs> That's weird. Super juicy. The last one before they freeze. Wow! The floor is covered with blueberries. Thank you, bushes. You are a beautiful mushroom. That's a decent one. The more mushrooms. These are decent. Welcome back to the orange top. If you've been following the channel for a while, you have seen this place before. In winter, at least. <laughs> mm. 
This is where I came uh, on my first trip when I tried to ski after my accident. <laughs> Looks a little bit different now, but still just as beautiful. Look at that mountain with the clouds on top. I love this place. It's amazing. I really love this landscape. Is that Sweden? That's Sweden, yes. Or on the other side of the mountain is Sweden. What a place to have a cabin. Huh? What a place to have a cabin. <laughs> yeah. It's not too bad. I can't complain about this place. But now I think uh, it's time for a quick lunch, isn't it? Dinner. Yes. A quick lunch. A quick lunch, okay. Do you, do you not understand what I'm saying? It's more like a dinner. A quick lunch. What? What do you have in your pocket? Is it called like this? Quick lunch. This is, this is the this chocolate. It's a <laughs> Norwegian tradition. It's a, the the hiking chocolate. Quick lunch. Quick lunch. And this is every Norwegian brings this when they hike in the mountains. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is basically, this is the Norwegian version of Kit Kats, but it's uh, a... <laughs> there oh, you go. Yes, thank you. And then, on the inside, you have Fjellet. the mountain, mountain rules. What? The, what's it called? The Fjellvetreglene. The mountain um, uh, safety rules, I guess, oh, you can say. Wow. So you have nine rules. Have a good and safe hike. Yes. If you follow these rules, uh, well, it's not like you'll ten. be safe in the mountains. No, it's nine. Nine. Oh. Nine official mountain safety rules. Oh, that's cool. I already had one and it's delicious. Yeah? Yeah, it's better than Kit Kat. This is better chocolate. The, yeah. The quality of the chocolate I is love better. Norwegian chocolate. It has a nice taste. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how you do it. This is my favorite place on earth. I love traveling. I love being out on my motorcycle in traveling. And I don't really miss Norway, but, but I do miss this place. This place is where I wish I could go more often when I'm out on the road. Yeah, I understand why. <laughs> and you showed me some nice little towns. Yeah, we went to Rødos. Mm -hmm. That was so the, beautiful. The slag heaps. Yeah, it's called slag. Yeah. yeah. I love this dark wood buildings. This I've never seen anywhere else in Europe. But no one is here. It's just super dead. Now this is a church that was uh, built by the copper company here, or paid for by the copper company. So it was built in the 1700s, I think. 1780, yeah. And you cannot find other churches like this? No, this is a unique one. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting inspirations. It's like this little bit Italian window. That's so strange. Are they just houses to rent for holidays and for when people come skiing or because... No, these people live here. These, these, are, these are homes. <laughs> I know, but... Well, here we have the, the, the slug heaps, the... I don't know what's... what's slug? Slug. I don't know what the, what, what the English word is. <laughs> Something else in my head when it's you say a... slug heaps. <laughs> No, it's uh, oh. the, the leftovers from the copper production. Yeah. So they melted the copper out of the rock and then what was not melted ended up in these heaps. Yeah. Is it a typical Norwegian village or is it special because it's a mining place? This is... Um, the way it looks. This is a special. Uh, and this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah. So uh, it's very unique. Yeah, so this is the melt hut where they melted down all the copper. Yeah. So now it's a museum. You can go down and you can see, uh, see the, the production line, kind of the, the actual melting place. And then they have like miniature, yeah. miniature uh, figures showing how the mine shafts look and how, how everything functioned. It's really cool. Yeah, I would love to see that. So that's when Norway was really poor. Yeah, Norway was one of the poorest countries in Europe on, up until uh, after the Second World War. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're on the slug heaps, and this was the, uh, I don't remember the name of the street, uh, Slaggata, Slaggata. Yeah. And uh, this was where a lot of the workers lived. 
This is kind of the, the most famous postcard yeah. view of <laughs> of Redos. It's so cute. I guess or one of them. It's so cute. Women who lived here earned a living as domestic servants in the houses of those who were better off. Among the craftsmen living in the street were a cobbler, a clock and watch repairman, and engravers, at several, and several musicians. One of the houses was occupied until 1950, and now it's just empty like this. So if you've seen Pippi Longstocking, yeah. the Swedish movie uh, of Pippi Longstocking, one of, one of the scenes was shot here. The scene where she throws a big snowball yeah, down the hill. One. She's standing on top there and throwing a big, big snowball down here. I didn't see it. <laughs> you know Pippi Longstocking, yes, right? Yes, I know. But I didn't see the film. It's so beautiful. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so these are the big, uh, this is the biggest slag heap. Uh, I don't know, it has a name. I don't remember what it is. It has a name. Yeah. <laughs> so this one? Yeah, the big one. <sighs> if you see, like, if you look at the rocks here. They're beautiful. They are uh, like, they've been melted. So the metal that was inside them was melted away. Yeah. But they've been uh, heated up to I don't know how many thousands of degrees. Wow. Uh, and that was what creates this sort of shape. And it, if you if you hear, if you listen, it sort of sounds like metallic. Yeah. When you... It's like metallic rocks. This was melted by 18th century Norwegians, right? Yes. Wow. What is it? 18th century Norwegian kids too, I guess. Probably. And um, you told me they produce copper for the whole world? Oh, well, not the whole world, I guess. But I, yeah, they produced quite a lot of copper. And some of the copper on the Statue of Liberty, I believe, was produced here. Huh. And so the, the Statue of Liberty was built in France. But uh, uh, a lot of the copper came from here. It's a pretty nice place. Wow, yeah. Very special. Look at this one. Here you can really see how it melted. Oh yeah? That's so cool. Uh, where does the, all the rock come from that they used? Huh? All the rocks that they used, they come from all around the region. And then they threw everything here. All the rocks uh, come from uh, the mines. So. Yeah, so all around here. Yeah, well, uh, most of them, there are several mines. The, the biggest one is the King's Mine at Sturvach. Yeah. Um, King o Olaf's mine, uh, which is uh, like, yeah, I think you can see uh, that on the top oh, over yeah. there. That's, uh, I believe that's like uh, the entrance of one of the mines. But uh, wow. uh, around these mountains, there are plenty of mines. And in, uh, in a place called Sturvach is what, uh, where most of it comes from. Okay, wow. As you can see, it's, uh, it is autumn. And uh, the beautiful autumn colors of, uh, of the trees are starting to show. And that changed so fast in like 10 days. 10 days ago or so it was green. Yeah. And suddenly it's so beautiful. I think Norway is going to be beautiful every day around the year in a different way. Yeah, the cool thing about Norway is that it's constantly changing. Yeah. So nothing looks the same. Every single day it looks different. Yeah, even in a whole day, yeah. you can have so many different types of weather. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite exciting. There's no, there's no ugly place in this country. Everything is so beautiful. Everywhere I look, there's something stunning. Maybe I'm used to, I don't know, boring French landscape, but for me, it's stunning everywhere. We've yeah. been to some coffee shops. Yeah, of course. Oh, I tried my first Scandinavian roasts. <laughs> they are delicious. Now I wouldn't have anything else. Everything else is too dark, so I really, I really love the coffee here. Do you understand why coffee is so difficult for me when I travel now? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love it like this. Yeah. Mm. Nice. And uh, yeah, Trondheim has some very good cafes. Uh, I think it's a lovely city, so 
So, so that's what we've been doing, right? That's Just basically for me, what we've uh, been doing, yeah. Immigrating, immigrating, immigrating. It uh, takes a lot of time, so that's it, really. And we've gone for some hikes. A few, uh, yes, yeah, when we had time, yeah. And the fun thing is that when we arrived, everything was green. And then it quickly turned yellow. And then uh, last week or so, there was the first snow of the of the season. Yeah. There was a. They went quite fast. They arrived quite fast. Yeah. Two three hours and it was covered, and then the next day it was gone. Look at this! You're so big. It's like this. Going around the room, <laughs> looking at all the windows. Oh. Wow! Like a little kid. Yes, and wait until we are outside. Oh. It's amazing. They're so big. <laughs> God, it's already all white. It's been an hour only. One week ago exactly today, and this is what it looked like back then. Quite a big transformation. beautiful yeah your first snow in Norway yeah you think you're gonna enjoy it here oh yes the winter? yes 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 that's what I want I came here to be cold <laughs> and see the dark landscapes and yeah I love that so some nice coffee <laughs> I don't know which one is it is it Ling Jura? so yeah this is actually Long Jura. it is not the bean um, because I have been uh, working a little bit while I've been here at my old job at Langira, doing some courses, some cuppings, some this and that. So, uh, so this is actually Langira coffee. Oh yeah, that's nice. But we've also been visiting Adrian at uh, his roastery in Us. Oh yes, your roaster friend. Yeah. <laughs> That was your first time visiting the rose tree, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was interesting. It's the very small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I expected something much bigger, but now you've been traveling with me for uh, quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Three what, months. What, what do you think of my uh, my coffee 
uh, nerdiness. Is well, it annoying? No, that's how I met you <laughs> because I love coffee too. I just don't know as much, but I'm learning a lot uh, thanks to you. And that's what I like. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is just go to cafes and try new ones. Yeah, so now you've been here for two months and yeah. you found a job, an apartment yeah, just and all recently. of this. So now you're basically settled in Norway. Yeah. I... Well, so just to get back to it, I know we talked a little bit about it before, but mm. what was the reason that you actually came here in the first place? Since I'm a kid, my dream is to live in Scandinavia because I love these landscapes and I like the cold and I like to be in peace near nature. So I always wanted to come here, but I had to do other things before for my career. And so I traveled around Europe and I was going to go, I was going to do something again for my career. I was going to teach French in Cambridge. Uh, I got a job offer and I was going to move in there. And then I learned some details about the pay and the living conditions. And like two weeks before moving in, I thought, okay, no, I'm not doing this. This is doing this just for the career and actually not being happy with it. What was the reason? Because working at Cambridge seemed like a big, yeah. big thing and a prestigious thing. So I already studied in Cambridge, so I know what it's like. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, there's some great research there, but I wouldn't just sacrifice everything to go there. And I would have to sacrifice all my savings because now with Brexit, you have to pay thousands for the visa. And the pay is really low, the pay they offered me. And the rent was higher than the pay. Like I would have had to pay to work. And they just use their prestige to attract people who would still work there, even though they would be paid nothing. And because I've already been there, I know what it's like. I just didn't fall in this trap. And I thought, well, I'm not going and I have, I, I quit my job and my flat. So I had nothing to go to England. And so when I decided not to go anymore, I just had nothing. I just had my suitcase and that was perfect timing to, to yeah. come here and uh, start over here and then. I had since forever, I had the dream of living in a place like this. So in peace and quiet, close to nature, um, cold climates, not too many people around. And then so it just matched perfectly because we were traveling together and I thought, well, I will try to come here and see if I can find a job. And if I can find a job quickly enough, then I can stay. And well, at first we spent time at the cabin just Chilling in the forest? Um, originally, we were supposed to but, travel just for three weeks together. Yeah, then I and was then, supposed <laughs> to go to England and then you were... I was supposed to come, come back, back to, to Italy, Italy and yeah. continue the trip. But this accident changed so much <laughs> yeah. in our lives. especially The accident my... stopped sort of my, my uh, progression and I had to just wait for the bike to get fixed. Such a stupid which, accident. Yeah. yeah. Such a stupid little bump that made such a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, the Cambridge thing happened at the same time. At the almost. same time. Yeah. So my for like years, I was planning to move to England at that point. And after England, I wanted to try Sweden or Norway. And then now, because this thing was canceled, I thought, OK, I will go straight away where I want to be. It doesn't matter if it's not prestigious or are good for my career but when you see how much you're paid anyway is it even worth the sacrifice of going there yeah because you're making more now than you yeah now i just uh, i do a practical job uh, just in service uh, something basic um, and I, I earn more than as a teacher in france or in any of the countries i lived in um, so that's great well i didn't come here for the pay i came here for the nature but it's a Pays plus a yeah, it's, it's a bonus. So, What do you want to do in the future? You, you <laughs> talked about you want to get but, a van or something? Well, with this uh, Cambridge thing, I had an existential crisis because until now, I was always fighting to get some very prestigious position in academia. And I got really sick of the whole academic world and the competition. And it feels just meaningless in the world we live in now. It just feels like they live in their own bubble. That's how I feel. And I don't feel like, I don't feel like it matches how I see life and how I want to live anymore. So just coming here is part of this uh, change of path, I guess. Um, and so I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't even know if I want to stay in academia or not. It feels a bit, uh, all a bit, uh, how do you say? You know, like when you see the situation in the world, everything, just babbling about stuff in academia, it just feels like pointless, meaningless. <laughs> I know it's not, but I devoted so much 
time and effort to this and now it feels is it really worth it i'm just sitting in front of a computer the whole day i have no private life i'm paid nothing and i cannot go where i want so i just come here and see what happens and just do a normal job that's kind of that's kind of a brave thing to do just yeah. say oh fuck this i i'm not enjoying it it's like let's this. try something else yeah because it's quite a crisis because since i'm 16 or so so since i'm studying so more than 10 years i'm just working toward the goal of being a university teacher and then when i got there and i saw yeah okay yeah no i don't want to do that for the rest of my life anymore. It's good that you so actually realized that. I realized that on time. Early. And yeah. it just happened all at once this sum summer, yeah, with the accident and all of this. And I didn't really know what I was doing. So I was kind of homeless, I guess. And just with my suitcase, I came here and see if it works. And so far it works. So I would love to stay for a year or so. But uh, not more because I want to, I would like a nomadic life or at least changing country every year or every two years while i'm young while i can while the the world allows it yeah so but once i'm sick of norway i will leave but i don't know why i would be sick of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, as long as you have the nature yeah i guess uh, it's always good yeah but the bu bureaucracy in norway is ridiculous oh yeah that's, uh, that's yeah. mainly why i don't enjoy being here <laughs> Yeah, it's good that you you have a cabin here, but living here the whole year, forever. Yeah, yeah. At the cabin, I'm I'm super happy, but I'm I feel so much better when I'm on the road traveling. Yeah. So that's kind of what I want to do with life in general. Yeah. Yeah. I, me too. I, I just when I'm on the road, everything else just disappears. Mm. And you get new experiences every day, and and you meet new people. You get new new influences new you hear stories from people yeah and you you evolve as a person so much faster than if you're mm. just stuck yeah in the same sort of nine to five life and yeah so i don't want that either so that's why i don't think i'll stay longer than a year because if i stay longer it means i'm getting settled and i don't want this yet maybe in 10 years <laughs> yeah. so i don't know which country i'll try next because norway was my ultimate goal so now you are sort of settled here basically and uh, yeah now i have everything yeah. i can just uh, hike and save and learn language and for me i uh, am now going back on the road um huh. but because the things took a little bit longer than expected it was supposed to take three weeks and mm. it took two months so now i'm going back to pick up my bike and travel for uh, as, as long as i can uh, around italy so yeah. I think um, the next episode, I will go back to Italy mm. and pick up the bike and see, see what's happening there. And then travel around Italy until I am ready to come back here again. Uh, and then after that, I have some, uh, some plans and ideas, but I'll share those with you <laughs> a little bit later. Big plans. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically uh, the status at the moment and uh, what's mm. been going on. Um, it's a bit clearer than right after the accident where we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, none of us really knew anything. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was uh, quite stressful. Yeah, but it's <laughs> been really nice getting exciting. to know you and traveling with you, and uh, it's been oh, yeah? it's was been it? it's been a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, it's been fun for me because like with in this whole journey, it's been. Uh, I started alone and then I met Jonathan and I traveled with him for a while and then I uh, traveled alone again. Yeah. Well, first I met Lert and Natasha and I stayed there mm. and got to know them quite pretty well. And then Jonathan and now... Yeah, he uh, just like traveling with French people apparently. <laughs> yeah, for, for some reason. Yeah. No, it's, it's been fun. So I, I really like this, like traveling alone and then you meet people. And then mm. they join you for a part of your journey and yeah. you, you, you build a stronger connection and, yeah. um, and then you continue alone again. And yeah. then you sort of have friends yeah. for, for that, that, that are m much deeper than if you just meet them and, and leave again. Yeah. So yeah, it's been fun. I didn't enjoy traveling by bus though. Yeah, that was just say. one night. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Oh, and also my plan is to save for a license here. So. That's also why I need to settle somewhere for at least a year so I can save. And take your license, yeah. And with a French or 
British teaching salary, then you cannot really save. <laughs> so at <laughs> least here I can save to have a license. Yeah. What have been your uh, sort of strongest impression or strongest experience on this trip that we've, or this time we've spent together? What do you mean strongest in good or bad or? Oh, whatever, whatever you, you feel. What have you, what have given you the biggest sort of... Uh, Making it to, to Norway. <laughs> Making it here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I was dreaming about being here for my whole life. So being here is like... Yeah, everybody has their own dreams. I know it's not a big dream, just Norway is next to France. But for me, it was a dream to try to come here and have the courage to come here without the certainty of a job or a house or anything and just try to make it happen and i did this with your help of course but this i'm really happy i achieved before being 30 years old so i could take my life in my own hands and do something for my happiness rather than my career that that's sounds good. really cliche but it uh, takes really, some really courage because i was really stressed i don't know anyone here at all and now you're leaving so i have to find my own <laughs> friends and <laughs> but it's fine Oh, well, you're making friends at work and stuff, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's more like a personal thing than. Yeah, well, I that's guess. that's great. Because stronger then depends what kind of These stronger things, on the good or the bad side. Or like this is a scary thing: moving to a brand new country without yeah. any information or any knowledge or yeah. anything, and then just like this, two weeks before, suddenly you change <laughs> your whole life around. Yeah. Um, maybe some people could take it. But for me, that was, it was quite stressful because I don't have that much savings. So I have the pressure to find a job soon. Then I, he's leaving, so I can't stay with him. So I have the pressure to find a flat soon, all of this. Yeah. No, uh, so good. that was stressful, but now it's pretty much done. So I'm happy I did it. And, but more regarding the trip. Well, for me, the highlight of the trip is Norway. <laughs> <laughs> <Cool>. but, <laughs> and for you? Uh, the, the mountains in Italy, mm. I was just stunning. I really like the rides. Be the before, I think the the best moment was the ride right before the accident. Yeah, down that's from what the, I was going to say. Down yes, from the, that was an amazing ride. Yeah, the curves down the mountain there was yeah. just insane. It's like a feeling I'm, I still feel in my body. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was great. Well, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, chat, this episode. <laughs> And uh, it's getting a bit chilly. I've enjoyed uh, getting to know Marion yeah. as well. <laughs> um, I have at least. And uh, I'm assuming I will see you again when I come back. I live in Trondheim now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, if you guys uh, enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up and click subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see what what happens next. Uh, like I said, my plan is to head back to Italy now, uh, but I don't really know anything how I will go or if the bike even is ready. I got news that uh, yeah. they've started uh, repairing it or ordered parts at least. It's going to feel good to be back on it. I, I missed it so much. It? Yeah. Yeah. You I've been driving happy. a car now here and I, yeah. ugh, I hate driving a car. It's yeah. so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Electric car. It's a good car, but still. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I hope I uh, will see you guys uh, in the next one. And uh, yeah, peace. Cheers. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you think you will be outside Europe again soon? I mean, soon, either next year, the next few months? Hopefully. It kind of depends on how well the channel goes. That, is that something that's need, in your head? I'm, uh, yes, mm. it is. But uh, I'm running out of money. Yeah, of course. And I it's need been a year now, so. I need my channel to grow, mm -hmm. um, so that I can actually fund yeah. the the trip. Yeah. Because so far I've basically spent all basically only my savings, mm. and the little money I made on YouTube has gone to, uh, well, getting uh, some gear and uh, yeah. some uh, and added a hotel here and there and. Did you break a Stuff lot of like things this. in the accident that you have to buy again? Like some your uh, side bags and all of this? The, the, your... No, the side bags I think were fine. But uh, yeah, I, I got parts of it back on insurance, but not all of it. Mm. So 
Uh, that's going to be quite expensive. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, the quota I got was for well, two and a half thousand euro to fix it. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah. And I'm still dealing with the insurance thing and, and all of this. Uh, it's not that easy to to get these things done when it's like across countries. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. If if I manage to grow the channel, which is what I'm working on now, and I manage to get enough money to to just keep traveling. Yeah. I don't really want to stop. Yeah, but of it's course. all up, up to <laughs> if I manage to grow the channel or not. Yeah. So if you want to help me, then spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to keep uh, or see, keep seeing, seeing me or watching me make a fool of myself on YouTube, <sighs> yeah. then uh, <laughs> spread the word about the channel and uh, tell your friends to watch. That, <laughs> would, uh, that would really, really help me. But yeah. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs>